Hey everyone, welcome back to Behind the Grape. Today we're going to start looking at wines, uh, or a wine, uh, just in time for barbecue season, patio season. It's right around the corner, uh, and I'm really hoping that this summer we can have barbecues and patios and wine with friends and family closer than six feet away without masks, but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. But the wine we're going to look at today, the Barossa Valley Estates Shiraz 2018 from the Barossa Valley. Barossa Valley is one of those uh, for me, it's one of those memori mesmerizing places. I think of some great iconic wines that come from this region. Uh, they have vines down there up to 175 years old, and I think of Yolumba in particular. Um, so Barossa Valley States, they've been around since, like I say, 1985. They only make three wines. They make the Shiraz, they make a Cabernet Sauvignon, and they make a uh, Rhone varietal blend of Grenache, Syrah, Mourvedre, or as we call it, GSM. Uh, the Brasa Valley, just for a little bit of uh, information, actually gets more sunshine or sunlight and less humidity than Bordeaux and Burgundy. So when you think of like iconic wines that come from Bordeaux and Burgundy, you're looking at a region here in Brasa that arguably has better growing conditions or in terms of uh, sunlight and uh, moisture than some of the iconic spots on the planet. That's pretty cool when you think that the wines come in at way less than a fraction of the price. Um, the soils tend to be a little more that red clom, red, <laughs> sorry, red clay loam. Um, so really that makes the, uh, the vines have to work a little bit harder to get down to the, the water table. But what you end up doing with that is they, as they're bringing that water up, you tend to get these big, rich, ripe uh, grapes that just give off great freshness and so much character. So let's look at the wine. First thing we always look at is the color. This wine, it's a deep red, and because it is so young, it's it's holding that color all the way out to the outer rim. There's no watering of the rim. There's no bricking. Uh, it's a solid color all the way through. It's very clean. There's no sediment. There's no gas. And, you know, I look at the tears from, I try to get a, a sense of where the alcohol is. There are very thick tears, and they're very close together. Uh, so, again, I'm, I'm already formulating my thoughts of where the alcohol is going to land on, on this. I want to know it. Barossa Valley has some very distinct uh, notes that, that separate it, and this wine has them all. It's definitely black fruit driven, very fresh, very ripe. A little bit of red fruit under there, but again, it's the black, black figs, black currants, black cassis. It's like a blackberry jam. Just that cocoa nib and cocoa dust, that chocolate, something I always get in Shiraz from the Barossa Valley. There's a slight green note through it, almost like a eucalypt. It's not a bell pepper, it's more on that eucalypt side. It's very, very, very uh, succinct, but it's there. And then the florals, lots of purple flowers. But that, and then there's a little bit of the overripe strawberry, the little red note in there. But really this is all about black fruit, really, really, really ripe and really fresh. Then there's lots of baking spices, nutmeg, cinnamon, cocoa, all oak, uh, and this this wine, just for your knowledge, it is done in, in French oak. So now let's taste it. One of the things I love about this particular wine, and it's not a slate against other Barossa wines, but sometimes when you're drinking Barossa Shiraz, it can be really rich and, and super jammy on the palate. This wine isn't that. That's not making it less of a wine. It's just, for me, it's making it more approachable. But all the fruit that I talked about is still there. It's all black fruit driven, black cassis, black currants, black figs, a little blackberry jam, a little bit of that ripe strawberry. Still getting that, that green uh, eucalypt note. Those overripe, almost like peppercorn strawberries and lo lots of purple flowers uh, just coming through here. And then again, I can still taste the the nutmeg, the cinnamon, the baking spices, all that oak um, markers. It's a medium bodied wine. You know, it, it doesn't sit very heavy. The tannins are ripe and they're integrated. Like, they're definitely there. You feel them around the outside of your, of your teeth, but they're not searing. Uh, they're, they're really in balance with the, the fruit of the wine. Alcohol is present, but it's again, it's not overwhelming. 
put this around 13.5 to 14%, and I always like to play this game, so let's take a look and see. 13.5%. So it's a wine that, you know, it's higher in alcohol, but not off the charts, and certainly not one that's that's offensive. And again, what I like about this for the summer is, at 13.5%, you can have one, two, three glasses with friends and not feel like you're drinking something super heavy under the, the hot Toronto sun that we tend to get here. Um, you know, it, it's super balanced. It's got great complexity. What I'd have with this wine, you know, I do like a peppercorn steak. I do a big ribeye, something with a good fat content just to soften up the tannins even further. I'd look at little pond of potatoes with a little truffled, uh, truffle oil or some fresh truffle and some uh, fleur de sel over top. Uh, but really, I want a big red meat to go with this wine. Or if I'm just sitting around with friends, maybe a little brisola and salumi board with some hard cheeses uh, would be a great little way to go with, uh, or yeah, with with this particular wine. Um, it comes into the Ontario marketplace. It's only through consignment, so it's not at the LCBO. But it comes into a great, uh, great woman named Camille Gemmel of Delegate Wines. Um, it's 22 and change a bottle, but it does come in six packs. So it's about 137 for a six pack. But you know when you do that, break that down, it's 22 dollars a bottle. And for a wine of this quality, this caliber from from the Bross Valley, it's really a steal. Uh, it's a wine that you can lay down and, and let it go for a couple of years, or you can you know first great day you want to have a barbecue, it's perfect to pull out. Your friends will love it. You'll love it because it speaks to Australia. Everything you want in Australia is in the glass, uh, and it's just. But it's not going to weigh you down. Uh, so again, if you're looking for that, that kind of wine for the barbecue season, this is the one for me. This is the one that I'm going to put in my cellar. It's going to be the first one that I'm going to pull open when I fire up that barbecue, and I hope it's one that you open as well. Uh, so, you know, pick up a little uh, Barossa Valley Estates uh, Shiraz from Delegate uh, Wines. Uh, reach out to me if you want the information, happy to provide it, and I hope you have a great barbecue season and that you're enjoying a lot of great wines, and in particular, one just like this. I know I will be. Take care, guys, and we'll talk again soon.